Right. So we've taken delivery of chipboard. 25 sheets of 18mm tongue and groove chipboard. 1.2 meters by 600, I think that is. And then this 100mm party wall insulation here. Ice of a. So, uh, yeah, got to get this all up onto the job site now. So, it's just having a chat with that guy. He's dropped off all of that. So, get this right, that guy, I bought all that off eBay and it's been fulfilled by Juicens. I bought all of that chipboard there. I bought all of that off eBay and it was fulfilled by Travis Perkins. Travis Perkins guy came from around the corner. That was fine. That Juicens bloke there has come from Woking. I live nowhere near Woking. And uh, yeah, he brought the whole lot from there. And now I've got to get it up onto the job site, which uh, isn't easy. It's easier, oh, I'm wearing, you know, you can see my face mask. It was easier than the K Rend, that's for sure. But uh, cheers, mate. Still a faff. There he goes. Back to Woking. It is another day for insulation. This 12mm insulation goes over the top of the rafters. So you have the tiles, the batten, the felt, the rafters, a little air gap of 20mm at least for condensation. Then you have the 100mm insulation and then you've got this 12mm, then you have your plasterboard over the top. There's quite a lot of it. They're the big sheets, eight foot by four foot, or 2.4 by 1.2. It's not particularly heavy. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this up myself. It's all kind of coming apart, but there's quite a lot of it, and I've got more on the way. There's more, there's more coming. So I'm gonna to have to think of something, some way of getting it up and off the driveway. Here's the current thinking. I head up the ladder, attach that rope to it, wrap it around really, really tight like a, like a well-wrapped present, rope it up from down here, tie off the rope, climb up and pull it in. That's the theory anyway. We'll give it a go. Okay, I've lashed this up as tight as I can with the rope. And now I'm basically going to pull all the slack off and see if I can hoist it up this way, like this. So that's a good start. What I need to do really is check where the balance, where the balance is, because it will swing around quite a bit. Thing is I want it, I, I want it ever so slightly at an angle because once it's dropped it will give me enough slack to then pull this up and, and pull it in because I've got to tie this off tight. That's the logic anyway. I've got to lift it up, up to there and get it past all of these. So I'm glad that it's got the pallet on it. We'll give it a go, we'll give it a go. So it's sashed up in place. See the rope comes down. I literally then just wound myself and the rope around the scaffolding in a series of loops, hooped over, pulled tight, looped over, pulled tight, then around. So now that's securing in place, I should be able to pull that in. Hopefully there's enough slack on the cable that allows me to actually pull it in. We'll, we'll have to see. Up the top, there is too much tension on this cable, which means I can, I can pull this in here, but I then can't actually pull it in. So what I'm going to have to do is lower it down ever so slightly. I'm going to try and rest it on these, on these here, on those spare ones there. Once I've rested it on those, or, or, and I'll try and pull this in, once I've rested those on, I can let some slack off the cable, which will give me enough rope to pull it in. Ideally, this would be a two-man job, I'm not gonna lie. Very, very loosely 
put this rope on here just to hold it towards the building or towards the scaffold so that when I then drop it down it behaves nicely and lands on those lands on those end scaffold bits. So the plan seems to be working okay so far. It's up against the building and there is a bit more slack on the rope. So I reckon I should be able to hoist this in now. And we're up. I can let go now because we're past halfway so there's no way it can tip out now. I can relax all of these ropes and pull it in. I'm not going to lie, that was really heavy and very hard. The difficulty is I couldn't do it in two separate lots because the Celotex is so, so soft. I mean, that's gone through the entirety of one board. So you've got to have as much protection as you can. But we're up here, it's in. These are the French doors, double open. I've done that so that I can get the insulation in. It's gonna be a bit of a kind of up and over job trying to get past that one, trying to get around that one because they're quite big sheets and I wanna keep them as full sheets for now. But I need to store it inside so I'll have to uh, bring it along here and then chuck it in basically. So I'm gonna do that now. Actually shows how much of a nice sunny aspect we're gonna have. Once this monoflex is off, we'll have all of that sunlight coming into the bedroom. That would be really nice, I think. Insulation has just arrived. That looks like a big truck for me. With some insulation, I hope. All this pack. Yeah. And the board on the top. Board's on the top. The board's on the top, yeah. Just unloading the IR. You see it peeking down through there. Just unloaded it. There's tons of the stuff. Now this is interesting, right? You can save yourself a fortune on PIR by buying it for seconds. So this is the company here, Seconds and Co. Right? And they're based up in Wales, in Powys. So here is all of the insulation. It's classed as seconds because they're a little scuffed bits like this or little scuffed bits like that but it's actually completely fine, all of it is perfectly fine. These are big 150 boards, there are some 90 and 100 boards there. I mean it's just really really good considering what I paid for it. So it was £48 for delivery and £820 for all of that insulation. So all of this. When I spec'd it up and I priced it, it would have cost over two and a bit thousand pounds for the amount that I've got there. But buying it as seconds, you know, fine, there are little scuffy bits, but you have to make cuts in it anyway to get it in. So you just cut out the bad bits and you keep the good bits. So I'm, I'm dead chuffed with that. So I would highly recommend having a look at Seconds & Co. As a business, they must be making an absolute fortune because they get five, you saw that big lorry, right? They get five Arctic lorries of PIR insulation into their yard in Powys every day. Five Arctic lorries a day, and they then have five of those big vans out on the road every day, six days a week, shipping all of this insulation. So they do a good they do they do a good trade these guys. But I. It's still very well priced, very, very inexpensive. There are other companies doing it. I found these guys, I thought they looked good and they were cheaper, moderately cheaper, and they delivered to where I was. Considering it's come from Powys, down to where I am, 48 quid for delivery is much cheaper than I could hire a big van or big lorry and go and get it there and back. So I'm very, very pleased with that. <laughs>